don't care how late you stay out. Stay out as late as you want. You want to borrow the new car? You want to borrow my credit card? Kids today, they really have it rough. I have no idea where we are or where we're going. I mean, when I was their age, life was easy, super easy. Why haven't you gotten a tattoo yet? How come you don't have any piercings yet? Yep, we're lost. We are completely lost. Ooh, sports. It, it, just do whatever the mechanic says to do. Vehicle maintenance is completely overrated. Look, whatever the mechanic is asking, just pay him. Pay him whatever he wants. I wish they had soap operas at night. I like that boy. You should date him. You should date him immediately. Well, what about the creepy guy with the motorcycle? He's cute. Yeah, sure. Spring break in Tahiti sounds fun. Hey, make sure you get all your video games done before you start your homework. You don't have to pass all your classes. What? You have a project due tomorrow and you've known about it for four weeks and you haven't started yet? Sweet! Doesn't anybody want to know if we're there yet? Remember, if you need anything between midnight and 4 a.m., please come wake me up. Hey, I'm on the phone. Could you bring the baby over and let him climb all over me? Hey, hey, can you please turn that music up? Well, we just stopped for lunch 10 minutes ago, but yeah, let's stop again. I never have trouble with my toddler. I never have trouble with my teenagers. I never have trouble with my adult children. You know, she's right. We are ruining her life. Yes, more homework to correct. All right, whining. Yay, tantrums. Mmm, vomit. We just really need to spoil these kids more. Sorry, buddy. I don't know any good jokes at all. You're 16. You pretty much know everything now. I think 18's a great age to get married. Okay, remember, make sure you turn on all the lights before you leave the house. Hey, could you leave the front door open for a couple hours? Thanks. Money really does grow on trees. <laughs> Will you all stand with me this morning and let's sing together, Love Lifted Me. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. From the waters lifted me, and I say, Fam, I love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me all my heart to him i give ever to him i'll cling in his blessed presence live ever his praises sing love so mighty and so true bears my soul's best songs faithful loving service to to him belongs Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Souls in danger, look above, Jesus completely saves. He will live to buy his love out of the angry waves. He's the master of the sea, billows his will obey. He, your Savior, wants to be me saved today. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Turn to welcome someone to church.
Good morning. Welcome to Fulton Free Will this morning. We are so glad you are with us in service. Happy Father's Day to all of our dads. Hope you have a great day today. Hope you get to do what you want to do, whatever that is for you. So I uh, hope you have a good day today. Uh, let me give you some announcements uh, real quick. Uh, first of all, there will not be evening service today, just like we did for Mother's Day. We'll do for Father's Day. So there will not be any uh, regular uh, Sunday night service tonight, so please keep that in mind. Also, don't forget we have campers going to camp this week. Where's our, are they, we got any campers in here? Are they in here? One, oh, we got several. Very, very good. Please be in prayer for our camp this week as we have been praying throughout camp season so far, and we'll be praying for them here in just a little while uh, when I give you a couple of other prayer requests uh, that I wanted to share with you today. Uh, but let me give you some announcements as well. Uh, also, don't forget Joy Group. Uh, if we could meet up front, Joy Group, for just five minutes, maybe right after service, uh, will not take long at all. Uh, so keep that in mind if you would. Uh, let me give you a couple of uh, prayer things that I want us to pray about and, um, and also uh, for camp. Um, Brother Eddie McNatt's family, we want to be in prayer for them. Uh, they had a death in the family last night and uh, a very tragic situation and so we would just like to be lifting up Eddie, his family, uh, his sister uh, and just the entire family uh, if you would please please remember them and then also uh, brother Terry Booker who is pastor at Fawn Grove Free Will Baptist uh, has been there for well over a decade and um, but he had a mini stroke uh, over the weekend and so please pray for brother Terry uh, as he recovers from that stroke. Uh, he's in the hospital. He's having some issues on the right side, uh, his right arm, uh, from my understanding. So uh, just please remember Brother Terry Booker, great man, great man of God. And so uh, if you would, just remember them, if you would. So let me uh, let us pray uh, for camp, for Brother Eddie, for Brother Terry, and then we're going to do some other things. <clears throat> Father in heaven, we... Thank you for this beautiful day that you've blessed us with, another day to be in your house, to gather together with your people, to lift up the name of Jesus. Uh, Father, how we thank you so much for that opportunity. Uh, Lord, we thank you for uh, your blessings to us. We thank you for your comfort, your love. Uh, Father, and as we think of Brother Eddie and his family, um, Lord, how we pray that you would comfort them today. Lord, I ask that they would look to you during these very difficult times. Lord, we pray that um, as only you can do, that you will bring good out of difficulty. And so, Lord, we lift them up to you today. We pray for Brother Terry Booker as well, Father, that you would watch over him. Um, uh, we pray that he would uh, um, have complete restoration in his body. Uh, Lord, we uh, pray that you would watch over his family, watch over his church. Lord, we pray for all those that will be at camp this week. We thank you so much for what you are doing at camp this year. Thank you for the souls that have been saved, for those who have recommitted themselves, for um, all that you are doing. We just stop to give you praise and honor. Uh, Lord, we, we lift up our kids to you today, those not only from our church, from other churches, that you would speak to their hearts this week at camp. Uh, Lord, we pray that they would learn your word, that they would learn who you are, how good and gracious Father that you are. And so, Lord, we lift them up to you today. We lift this service up to you. Pray, Lord, that you would be honored and glorified in all that's said and done. And we pray it in Christ's name. Amen. Um, I'm going to ask Miss Jane Hargett, if she would, to come now. And she would like to take a moment to share about her dad on this Father's Day. I just have a few words I'd like to say, but I did have the very best parents in the world. I don't know anybody that could come up with mine. So I just wrote down a few words. I said, I was fortunate to have the best dad in the world. He provided for a family consisting of 10 children. But the most important thing that I can think about him, he taught me the way of salvation. He taught me to know right from wrong, and to always be honest 
He said we had to be honest in everything we did. And his handshake was just as good as a written deed. And he said that's the way the world was supposed to be. He told me the, one of the most important things that I could have while I was here in this world was friends. And he said to have friends that I had to be a friend. But the only, the most important thing that I want to say today, I just want to say thank you, Dad, for being a great example. And I'm telling you, we all had the example. You may not can look at all of us kids that's left and see, but in our hearts, we all know what we had, and we're so thankful for what we had. Thank you, ma'am. Well, we want to honor uh, all of our dads today. We thank you so much for who you are, what you do, uh, and, and so we honor all of you today. But we have a little tradition here of, of um, honoring a couple of dads, uh, and um, so I, I want to do it a little different this year than maybe we have in the past, and uh, we'll, we'll see. So uh, normally we go with the youngest and the oldest dad, but I wanted to change it up a little this year. And so, uh, so we're going to go with the newest dad. And so uh, I have a feeling I know who the newest dad may be. Uh, so if he, Jeffrey, would like to come up for a minute. Uh, Jeffrey, you might as well bring Silas too, if you can. Uh, see, I'm already challenging his dadhood right there. So, so uh, uh, hang on. If we could do the yellow mic again. Thanks, sir. If you want to uh, <laughs> announce for us, baby Silas. Well, um, a lot of you have already met him uh, a few minutes ago, but this is Silas Clay Martin. Um, he was born last Friday. That's the, um, is, that the <laughs> <laughs> is that the ninth? <laughs> okay, all, all the time is ran together. Um, <laughs> as I know, uh, all of you um, can think back to uh, the first days of the first child, and it, it, it has all ran together. But uh, he was born last Friday. He weighed eight pounds and three ounces. Uh, he's lost a little bit of weight since then, but we've got it back up to uh, to where I think he's he's gaining at a good rate. Um, um, and he was 20 and three-fourths inches long, which is... Longer than most babies. It's not abnormal, but he's got pretty long legs. Uh, I have no idea where he got those. Uh, but uh, he, he's been such a blessing to us, and uh, um, we're so thankful um, to you as a church family for helping us prepare for him. Uh, we've already went through a lot of those diapers uh, and the wipes, but and we also uh, just thank God for the blessing that uh, he is. Amen. Thank you, sir. Well, since you are the newest dad, we have this for you now. I, I'm going to tell you now, it is a Walmart gift card. Okay. It's for you. Okay. Not formula or diapers <laughs> or it's for you. So anyway, okay. congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> and then we would like to uh, honor our oldest dad. Um, does anybody want to admit to that? Uh, I'm thinking Brother Wayne, Brother Wayne Wood. Uh, anybody want to volunteer to say you're older than Brother Wayne would? No. no. All right. Brother Wayne? We honor you today, sir. Lord bless you. Can we give all of our dads a hand? All right, let's have our ushers come forward and we will receive our morning tithes and offering. Brother Danny.
for our last hymn this morning, let's sing Joy Unspeakable. I have found his grace is all complete. He supplieth every need. While I sit and learn at Jesus' feet, I am free, yes, free indeed. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory, full of glory, full of glory. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory. Oh, the half has never yet been told. I have found the pleasure I once craved. It is joy and peace within. What a wondrous blessing I am saved from the awful gulf of sin. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory, full of glory, full of glory. It is joy unspeakable, full of glory. Glory, oh, the half has never yet been told. I have found the hope so bright and clear, living in the realm of grace. Oh, the Savior's presence is so near, I can see his smiling face. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory, full of full of glory it is joy unspeakable and full of glory oh the half has never yet been told i have found the joy no tongue can tell how its waves of glory roam it is like a great overflowing well springing up within my soul it is joy unspeakable and full of glory, full of glory, full of glory. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory, oh, the half has never yet been told. Thank you. Life is always fair. I really enjoy repeating myself over and over again. I just love when the kids talk back to me. I don't care if you get a job this summer. I don't care if you get detention. Uh, uh, I, I can't open this jar. See if mom can open it. Just take your time in there, okay? No means maybe. Hey, why don't you bring that ball inside and play with it? Hey, don't put that back where you found it. Just leave it on the floor. You bacon. If you put a dent in the car, it's really no big deal. It's 10 a.m. Go back to bed. Look, whatever your friends are doing, just do the exact same thing. I got more than enough sleep last night. If your friends are okay with it, then I'm okay with it. Stop signs are just a suggestion. You don't need a chaperone. You don't need a seatbelt. You don't need a savings account. You should buy the jeans with the holes in them. Hey, we're all gonna go to church, but you can just sleep in, okay? Can we please just hang out in here for another 10 minutes? Hey, can we get some more bickering back there? All right, bills! Yay, traffic! Woohoo, taxes! Yes! Laundry! Hey, can you kids come in here and jump on my bed? <laughs> Quick, go tell mom what happened right away. You don't need to finish your dinner. Hey, look at your phone when I'm talking to you. I wish I had a smaller TV. We got you that phone for a reason, texting boys. All right, everyone, listen up. Mom and I are going out of town this weekend, so please mess up the whole house while we're gone. Please throw a few parties while we're gone. Please forget about the dog entirely while we're gone. Hey, when you're finished pouring that, can you just leave it out on the counter all day? Thanks. Hey, what are you doing? I'm gonna bungee jump out of this tree. That's a really good idea. Right, children's church can be dismissed. <laughs> Yay, it's right. It's right. <laughs> oh, you know there's some adults going, why can't I say that and leave?
Well, uh, this morning um, we are honoring dads, and my, my sermon isn't just for dads. It's really for all men, uh, but I think all of us hopefully can, can take away some things. Uh, um, and so I, I believe, if I remember right, in Mother's Day I may have mentioned that there are times when ladies may say one thing and mean something else, right? Amen? So, so I thought I would share uh, something I came across called a men's thesaurus because there's at times when men say something and they also mean something else, right? So I thought I'd share a few of these because I, I kind of thought they were funny. So uh, when a man says it would take too long to explain, what he means is I have no idea how it works. When a man says take a break, honey, you are working too hard. What he means is, I can't hear the game over the vacuum cleaner, right? When a man says, that's interesting, dear. What he means is, why are we still talking about the same thing and it's been 10 minutes? When a man says, it's a guy thing. What he means is, there is no rational thought pattern connected with this and you have no chance of making it logical, right? When a man says, can I help with dinner, what he means is, I thought it would be ready by now. When a man says, uh-huh, sure, honey, or, yes, dear, well, what that means is nothing. It's just a conditioned response that we have. I mean, that's just that's what we do. If a man says, I heard you, what he really means is, I haven't the foggiest clue what you said, and I'm just hoping desperately to fake it well enough so that you will not spend the next three days mad at me. So when a man says, I love this, that's not what I meant. What he means is, if something I said can be interpreted two ways, and one of the ways makes you sad or angry, I meant the other one. And by far, this is my favorite. When a man says, you know how bad my memory is, what he means is, I can remember the theme song from Gilligan's Island and Hogan's Heroes, the phone number of the first girl I ever kissed, and the vehicle identification numbers of every car I have ever owned. But yes, I forgot your birthday. And lastly, when a man says, I'm not lost, I know exactly where we are, what he truly means is, no one will ever see us alive again. So... That's where we are. Uh, This morning, I want to, uh, hopefully, I want to encourage uh, our men uh, to be that man. And so, uh, uh, there's a quote that is attributed to D.L. Moody, and the quote says this, The world has yet to see what God can do with a man fully consecrated to him. By God's help, I aim to be that man. Now, D.L. Moody uh, lived from 1839 to 1899. He was an evangelist. He was a publisher. He was a church planter. Uh, Moody Bible Institute that's pretty well known. Uh, Moody Church in Chicago. Uh, All of that is attributed to D.L. Moody. Now, the quote that's on the screen for you is attributed to him, but actually... Moody never said it. Now, it's attributed to him in in probably the only movie that's ever been made of Moody, but the actual uh, uh, quote came from a man by the name of Henry Varley. Henry Varley was a British evangelist, and Henry Varley had befriended Moody in 1872, and they had a conversation in Dublin, uh, and, and in that conversation, he looks at Moody and he says, Moody, The world has yet to see what God can do with a man fully consecrated to him. And a year later, uh, Moody uh, asked Varley if he had remembered making that statement. And, And he was honest and he just said he did not remember it. But this is what Moody said, quote, he said, Ah, those were the words sent to my soul through you from the living God. As I crossed the wide Atlantic, the boards of the deck of the vessel were engraved with them. And when I reached Chicago, the very, the very paving stones seemed marked with, quote, Moody, the world has yet to see what God will do with a man fully consecrated to him. 
Under the power of those words, I have come back to England and I felt that I must not let uh, more time pass until I let you know how God had used your words to my inmost soul. Wow. The world has yet to see what God can do with a man fully consecrated to him. By God's help, I aim to be that man. And I believe that you too desire to be that man. And the reason I say that is because you're here. You could be anywhere else you want to be. And you're here. So this morning, I want to share with us three ways that we can be that man. First of all, to be that man, we must be men who have learned and are learning to lean on Jesus. We need to learn, we, we, hopefully we have learned to lean for salvation, right? Ephesians 2, 8, 9, for by grace... You have been saved through faith, and it is not of your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. If you're here today and you are saved, aren't you thankful? Aren't you glad your sins are forgiven? Aren't you glad you have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ? Aren't you glad that you can pray to God and know that He hears, that He answers, that He's concerned, that He intervenes? And if you're here today without Jesus Christ, I remind you of Romans 10, 13. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. It is a promise that God gives. That wasn't my phone, by the way. That is a promise that God gives. That everyone who calls on the name of Jesus, no matter what your past is, no matter how bad you think you've been or how bad you think you are, no matter what you say, well, those sins are just way too bad. There's no way He could cover those. Jesus says, I died on the cross and I absolved those sins. Come to me and receive the great gift of salvation. Not only do we lean on him for salvation, but also for strength. Isaiah 40, verses 30 and 31 says, Even youths shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Psalm 46, 1, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Life can zap us. Physically, emotionally, spiritually, life can absolutely zap all of us. Not just men, all of us. We men just tend not to say anything about it. But life can absolutely take everything out of us. However, men who lean on Jesus, Scripture promises that their strength will be renewed. This is the promise from God in His Word. Therefore, we can rely on the Lord for strength for every single day that we live. So we can lean on Him for salvation, we can lean on Him for strength, we can lean on Him for supply. Philippians 4.19 says, And my God will supply every need of yours according to His riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Someone has made the statement, We want to be the breadwinner, the mighty hunter, but ultimately we need to see even our own selves as being in God's hands. Because we are. We breathe because He gives us the breath. Our heart beats because He gives us that gift. The Lord promises us that He will care for us. He promises that as long as we seek Him and His kingdom, that He will supply our needs. Now, this doesn't mean, as as we talked about in Sunday school very briefly, this doesn't mean that we don't work. It it doesn't mean we sit on the couch going, I think the Lord will send me a check today. It'll just just be there. I mean, I didn't do anything to get one, but I'm sure it'll be there. No, He doesn't do that. Now, there are times, as I've experienced in my own life, when, when circumstances dictate that God has to do some amazing things, and there's times when He just does, and you go, wow, didn't see that one coming. 
And in the, it's really in those moments when uh, trouble comes and, and, and hard times come, it is in those moments when we really see how the Lord does supply. But not only that, but also for soundness, for wisdom. James 1.5 says, If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given him. Now we've already seen three things. That God says, I will, if you pray, it's a yes. Now there's many things we pray where, where we, we pray out of selfishness and we pray out of self-centeredness and everything else, and the answer is probably going to be no. But there's, there, but there's some things that the Lord says, if you pray this, the answer will always be yes. Salvation is always a yes. And now He says that wisdom is always a yes. Pray. Now he does say, when you keep reading in James, verses 6 and on, he does talk about how you need to ask without being double-minded. You know, it's like, yes, Lord, please give me wisdom, but I really don't think he's going to do that. But if we pray and ask the Lord for wisdom, he says, I will give you wisdom. So men, to be that man... Number two, to be that man, we must be men who have learned and are learning to lead. We need to lead in two particular areas that I want to mention this morning. Uh, one is our flesh and the other is our family. Our flesh. 1 John 2.16 says, For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the boastful pride of life, this is not from the Father, but it is from the world. The lust of the flesh. Uh, next week, as we're working our way through the Sermon on the Mount, the next topic in that sermon is lust. And so we'll be dealing with that next Sunday uh, as we work our way through the Sermon on the Mount. But here, uh, John says the lust of the flesh. Dr. David Allen says lust of the flesh describes what it means to live life dominated by the senses. William Barclay takes it a little farther and, and he said this, he says, quote, gluttonous in food, slavish in pleasure, lustful and lax in morals, selfish in the use of possessions, regardless of all the spiritual values, extravagant in the gratification of material desires. Paul gives a contrast in the book of Galatians. We focus many times uh, on the last part of this particular text. But what we fail sometimes to think about is what he, he compares that to. And so I just want to remind us, because what he compares it to is the lust of the flesh. So he says in verse 19, Now the deeds of the flesh are evident, which are immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger, disputes, dissensions, factions, envying, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these. So he's like, this isn't even a complete list. I'm just giving you some, and there's things that go along with those. So it says, he says, of which I forewarn you, just as I have forewarned you, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Then the contrast is, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. But notice verse 24. Now those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified its flesh with its passions and its desires. The lust of the flesh. Not only is there the lust of the flesh, there's the lust of the eyes. And I'm going quickly. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes. Jesus tells us in Matthew 6, 22 and 23 that the eye is the lamp of the body. So then if your eye is clear, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light that is in you is darkness, how great is the darkness. Be careful what we let in 
through our eyes. Be careful what we look at. Again, Dr. Allen says the lust of the eyes describes someone who is captivated by an outward show of materialism. We see a new car, we have to have the new car. We see a new dress, we have to have the new dress. We see a position, we have to have that position. And again, he says cars, dresses, possessions, etc. They're not in and of themselves sinful, but the inordinate desire to have what we see is sinful. An inordinate desire to have anything contrary to God's will is sinful. It's that I've got to have it because I saw it. It's that entitlement mentality, isn't it? I saw it, I like it, therefore I should have it. And then the third is the boastful pride of life. This describes the arrogant spirit of self-sufficiency. It expresses the desire for recognition, applause, status, and advantage in life. It's it's the guy who has to one-up you all the time, right? I went on vacation. Oh, we had such a good time on vacation. We went up to Pigeon Forge. Well, I just got back from Africa, and I went on this safari, and I shot three elephants while I was there, and then it just goes on from there, right? It's, 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 he has to one-up you in, in a job. You know, you're, you're thankful you got a small raise. And you, you're just in conversation talking with them. And, and, and man, I'm just thankful that, that I got this raise. It's going to help my family. That, yes, 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 yeah. I got, I, they just upped me $100,000 this year. It was great. It was great. Or, or you know, it's, it's, we just, we bought us that new uh, Honda Civic, and I, we just, we're so excited. I finally, I was able to buy my daughter that Honda Civic. Yeah, yeah. I just bought my two Lamborghinis last week, and, and, and they're in the garage now. I had the guy come by and re-detail them for me because it, it had like a piece of lint on it. We had to redo it. So it's, it's, it's that mentality of we have to just one up everything. The boastful pride of life. Someone has said this, and it's very well taken, and we all should take it into account. We have to lead our flesh, or our flesh will lead us. Right? We have to lead our flesh, or our flesh will lead us. And that's men, women, boys, and girls. Not only do we have to lead the flesh, we need to lead our families. Can I just be honest? Even as a pastor... This is the hardest. It is. Because they see you day in, day out. They see the good. They see you in a good mood. They see you when you're in a bad mood. Believe it or not, I can be in a bad mood. I know it's hard to believe. I can get upset over the stupidest things. And then I hate myself for it. But we are to lead our families. Ephesians 5.23 says, For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ also is the head of the church, he himself being the Savior of the body. Now this isn't about domineering, but it's about lovingly leading our family. We do it out of humility. We do it with servanthood. We do it through the guidance of Scripture and through the Holy Spirit. That's how we do it. So men, if we're going to be that man, we have to lead our flesh and our families. And thirdly, to be that man, we must be men who have learned and are learning to love. First of all, we need to love Christ. Love the Lord God with all your heart, soul, mind, And strength, Scripture tells us. Now, now I want you. I want to read some verses out of First Corinthians thirteen because Paul um, explains to us the importance of love. Listen to what he says. Chapter thirteen, verses one through three. He says, "If I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but do not have love." I have become a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. 
If I have the gift of prophecy and know all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains but do not have love, I am nothing. And if I give all my possessions to feed the poor, and if I, if I surrender my body to be burned but do not have love, it profits me nothing. So we can, we can lead, we, we can do all those things that we say we do, but if we do it without love, it means nothing. So it means it doesn't matter how much money we have in the bank. It doesn't matter how big our house is. It doesn't matter how many cars are in the driveway. It doesn't matter what school we attended and what school we send our kids to. If we don't have love, if we don't give love, then we are nothing and we are giving nothing. Because all those other things are just going to vanish away. And if we're going to love like we need to love, if we're going to love with that unconditional love that God loves us, we need to love Him. Because He will teach us how to love. So men, we must be learning to love Jesus. Not only do we love Christ, but we love the church. Jesus Christ so loved the church that He gave Himself up for her, Ephesians 5.25 tells us. Christ loves the church. Therefore, men, we are to love the church. And remember, the church is people. It's not the building. This is just a building. It becomes the church when we enter it. When we exit it, we still call it the church building, but it's just the building. The church is people. So we must love one another. 1 John 3.11, For this is the message which you have heard from me from the beginning, that we should love one another. 1 John 4.11, Beloved, if God so loved us, so we also, or we also ought to love one another. I love the church. I do. I love being around the church. Which means I love being around you. Listen, it's lonely down in that office during the week. Right? Now you got to get things done and you got to study and prepare and pray and do all those things, but it's quiet. Unless those big bees that could fly by every so often hit the window and kind of startle you, you know, kind of thing. Think somebody's coming in. So I don't come over here at night. It's too freaky. Just saying. So, but it can be lonely during the week. Because I love being around people. I like being around the church. And God instilled that in me. I've shared this with God instilled that in me as soon as I got saved at the age of 14. There, there was just... I had to be there. Look, I, I, I made mention that as a teenager that uh, Masters Men met once a month, and, and I was there. And I was the only teenage kid there. And it wasn't just so I could hear the teaching, which it was, some, okay, honestly, sometimes it was good, sometimes, eh, not really. So, but, but I loved being around those men. Loved those men. And yeah, they had faults, but they loved Jesus. And we would laugh, and there would be times that they would share a few things here or there. They didn't share a lot as far as personal things, but, 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 but we met together and we fellowshiped together, and, we, and I learned from those men. I mean, literally, I could sit now and probably go through the rows of some of those same men that were there every single month. Loved being with those men. Men, we got to love each other. 
I'm not saying we don't. I'm just encouraging us to keep on loving. It's good for us to spend time together. It is helpful for us to spend time together. Because, listen, we weren't created as men. Uh, as much as we like being having our own, you know, our caveman time and our, our, our uh, sports time and our alone time and, and those kinds of things, as, as much as those things can be good, none of us are created to live this Christian life alone. We are called to live it in community. So my encouragement to, to you as a man is if you're sitting here today and you feel like, man, that sounds really good, but I really kind of feel like I'm on the outside of that. My encouragement to you is get on the inside of that. Because we're called to love. And yes, that's manly. So to be that man that God uses, we must do three things. We must be men who have learned and are learning to lean on Jesus. We must be men who have learned and are learning to lead. And we must be men who have learned and are learning to love. I thank the Lord for every one of you men. I am thankful for who you are, for what you do for your family, for what you do for this church, and what you do for this community. So I end with the quote that I started with. The world has yet to see what God can do with a man fully consecrated to him. And by God's help, I aim to be that man. We're going to do our invitation a little different today. Uh, I, um, I had no idea when I was preparing the sermon that, um, that when I entitled the sermon, Be That Man, that I had no idea there was a song that goes right along with the title of, and, and kind of the theme of the sermon. And so when I was doing, I like to do Google searches for like backgrounds and things like that. And so when I was Googling it, uh, uh, Brian Free of Brian Free and Assurance Group, his face popped up in my Google images. And I'm like, why is he popping up with be that man? I mean, I'm, I'm sure he's that man. I'm just saying, why is he popping up in my Google search? So I, I did a little searching and found, guess what? He sang a song or sings a song about this very thing. And I thought, wow, how fitting. So our invitation is going to be that particular song. And it's not to be sentimental, it's not to be emotional, it's not to be teary, it's not to be anything like that. It's just, it's men. I want you to be that man. I want to be that man. And I know I fall short. But I know deep in me, that is my desire. And I believe it's your desire. And so my invitation to all of us men is, if, if you're here and you need salvation, by all means, come. Come. Because you'll never start being that man until you surrender to Jesus. No matter how good you are to your family, no, how, no matter how well you take care of them. And the reason is, is because we've got a sin issue. And that sin issue hurts our relationship with God. It's actually cut it off. It's killed our relationship. And that relationship has to be restored. And it can only be restored through Jesus. That's it. 
It's not your good works. It's not how you care for your family. It's not to make sure they got a good house over their head and, a, and cars to drive and food to eat and all those kinds of things. That's not going to get it. It only comes by repenting of sin and trusting in Jesus. So if you're here without salvation, this come. But men, if you're in the faith, if you're in the faith, and you want to be that man, then I want you to come join me at the altar. Because I'm going to be the first one at the altar. I'm going to get you to stand. I'm going to say a, just a quick prayer. Is it? Father, we thank you for this day. And Lord, in this next four minutes, how I ask that you would speak to our hearts as men. Lord, I believe there are men in this room who truly desire to be that man. Lord, as many times we fail and we falter, and we do things that we wish we had not done, we, we react in ways we wish we had not reacted. But Lord, on deep in us, there is that hunger and that desire to be that man. So Lord, I pray for every man that is standing here. Lord, I pray if there's one who needs salvation, that today would be the day that they repent and trust Jesus. I pray, Lord, for the man who wants desires to, to truly be that man, Lord, that they would, if you're so calling them, if you're so stirring them, Lord, that they would come and kneel and ask you to help them be that man. We need you, Lord. We need you. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. was awake before the sun With his Bible opened up Seeking truth with every single page he turned Anyone could see My daddy lived what he believed With a gentle heart A passion for Jesus burned We disagree, but the longer I live, it's clear to me. I want to be that man who loves the Lord with all his heart, just like.
things to us. I thank you for your word, and Lord, truly how it penetrates our very soul. Father, I thank you for our men. I thank you for their love for you, for the love for their families, their love for this church. Lord, may this be a moment when possibly families are changed. When we as dads change. When we as husbands change. Lord, we need you. Lord, without your strength, we will fail. Father, I pray for every young man. Lord, I pray you'd protect them. I pray, Lord, they would truly seek you with all of their heart. I pray, Lord, that you would just move in their hearts and their lives, Lord, and help them see that the best decisions they can make is to live a life for you. I thank you for our young men in this church. I pray, I thank you for the example that they set. I thank you, Lord, that there is uh, young men in this church that my son can look up to. Father, we just stop to give you thanks and praise for this day. And Lord, we thank you for what we have experienced in your presence today. And we pray it in Christ's name. Amen. Uh, don't forget, uh, we will not have regular evening service tonight. So uh, dads, uh, be with family and do whatever you guys uh, enjoy doing together. So hope you have a great Father's Day. And may the Lord bless you.